I'll be talking very quickly about uh, this, this subject from an uh, FAO perspective. We'll also allude to the ILO FAO strategic partnership in working on rural employment and decent work. Um, work out a couple of uh, examples of potential interventions, and then we'll allude to the potential creation of a joint uh, partnership, especially under the ongoing uh, NEPAD implementation of, of CADEP and the Rural Futures uh, Initiative. So one point I really would like to make at the very beginning, FAO, uh, as the organization working on food security by and large, obviously deals with MDG1, and everybody knows about the two goals of reducing hunger and poverty. But in 2005, there was this third goal, which now is 1B, added to MDG1, which is actually on full employment, uh, full and productive employment and decent work for all, including women and youth. And this adding of this additional target clearly demonstrates that there was a realization that how do you actually achieve the reduction of poverty and increase food security. You have to have a means, and this means is productive, gainful employment that generates the income that enables people to actually purchase food, so increased purchasing power. So that addresses the second axis of food security, which is the access. And of course, also higher skill levels, higher productivity, more production increases actually the production of agricultural foods and supplies them into markets. So that's the first pillar of food security. Uh, which is actually the provision of, of food. So as such, employment, but not only employment in its quantitative sense, but also the qualitative as aspects of em employment that Ro Loretta alluded to, social security, standards and rights and work, and so on, are tremendously important to keep in mind and to observe and to really follow in order to create sustainable employment that really creates livelihoods options for especially also young people in rural areas. Next slide, please. Um, why youth? Why concentration of youth? We heard that over and again. 70% of uh, the young population lives in rural areas in Africa. 70% are living uh, on less than $2 a day. 40% of youth is un unemployed in sub-Saharan Africa. So the, the typical characteristic, the profile of a youth in Africa is poor, rule, little education, and extremely little job opportunities. Next slide, please. Just to making the point, in sub-Saharan Africa, the unemployment rate of youth is roughly twice as high as it is for adults. In North Africa, it's almost uh, four times as high, and that we have heard in the, uh, in the aftermath of the Arab Spring over uh, and again. Uh, participation rates are by 20 to 25 percentage points lower, lower as they are for adults. Next slide, please. This is my, um, my most uh, favorite slide, which I stole from the rule structures program that uh, Dr. Mayaki has mentioned in his opening statement. It shows that in Eastern Africa, the cohorts of youth coming into markets actually tapered off around the 80s, mid 80s, 90s, and is declining ever since. In South Central Asia, we are expecting the sort of peak of additional people coming into markets uh, around 2000, 20, 25, 30. But Africa, which is, are the red bars, we do see a continuous increase in additional young people entering very shallow labor markets all over sub-Saharan Africa. And even up to 2005, this will not completely taper off and will continue to increase. So do we not only have a problem with youth employment currently, but this graph clearly shows that there is more to expect for the future and we need to take care of this. Next slide, please. Thank you. Here just a couple of challenges, but we heard about this. Uh, youth, as well as women, find themselves very often in temporary employment uh, arrangements that are very unsecure, uh, seasonal employment. They, don't know, they lack access and do not have the control over the productive resources they, they work with. There's no collateral because they did not have, for various reasons like inheritance systems, not the opportunity to actually accumulate anything that would, uh, would be, create the basis for collateral. Uh, they have very 
very often low education, inadequate skills, especially when it comes to production, more sophisticated production uh, um, uh, segments of, of value chains, and also when it comes to business, business skills. Globalization and economic crisis constitutes a problem for everybody, but for those who have a comparative disadvantage already to uh, productively act in markets, these are exacerbated exacerbated, sorry, and create more uncertainties for them. Um, and uh, it's, it's much harder for those to actually deal with var variability in prices, for instance. And there are numbers more of challenges that youth as well as, as women face. And the combination of being youth and being a woman is particular a double, uh, a, a double burden. So girls facing lack of access to education, do not have the skills, are disadvantaged in accessing markets, in actually having the control over resources, and so on and so forth. Next slide, please. The recent uh, SOFA, which is the State of Food and Agriculture Report at FAO, which is the FAO flagship uh, publication, actually dealt with women in agriculture, and it showed that uh, women plots are actually uh, performing 30 20 to 30 uh, percent below the productivity levels of male um, plots, and this is not because women are the are n not as good farmers as their male counterparts, but because women do not actually have the access to the respective productive uh, resources and the control over them. And if this gap of access to productive resources would be closed, this kind of productivity. Um, misperformance could actually be closed. So we would expect 20 to 30% more productivity gains in agriculture on, on women, women farms. And that would lead to a substantial increase in GDP and therefore lead to actually overall economic uh, growth and uh, wealth and would reduce the number of hungry people significantly, especially looking at the pattern on how women actually spend their respective income. We have a joint publication, if you go one back for one second, uh, between FAO, ILO, and IFAD on uh, women and uh, rural employment with a set of seven policy briefs where we allude to some of the issues that were raised with respect to infrastructure and others. Um, and there are a couple of copies on the table uh, up front. Next slide, please. <laughs> Um, so as FAO, we are addressing the challenge of uh, youth employment through uh, youth-friendly training uh, for employment creation. We very much concentrate on uh, farmers associations uh, and other institutions like cooperatives uh, for youth, their participation in the regular associations or the creation of explicit youth farmers associations. For us, this is really a vehicle to empower young people to effectively participate in market, to set up their own businesses, and so on and so forth. We think they need the adequate support to really unleash their full potential to become active partners uh, in the market environment. Uh, one way of how we are doing this, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit uh, later, are junior farmer field and life schools, which are an offspring of the more well-known farmer field school approach that has been developed at, uh, at FAO. And this is really geared towards not only agriculture training, it's geared towards life and business skills for young adults to make them mature uh, young people who go out in the markets and negotiate the price for their produce, set up their business, and so on and so forth. So it's really employment creation, but it's also entrepreneurial uh, skills that are um, taught in this, in this approach and really facilitate youth to set up their respective business. I just want to very briefly allude to the uh, very strong strategic partnership that FAO has with ILO. Uh, we are certainly, as an organization, the junior partner on employment, very much concentrating, obviously, on rural employment, agriculture, informal arrangements, the informal economy, as was uh, highlighted before. Uh, but it is very, very conducive uh, that these two organizations come together on the subject matter. Uh, the International Partnership on Child Labor Prevention, for instance, uh, Loretta just mentioned 60% of child labor is in agriculture, and there's a large value added that we actually come on board in this particular uh, area. There are many other areas, and not all of them are listed here anyway, uh, where we have very, very strong partnerships and collaborations. Next slide, please. 
Now this slide here shows a little bit how FAO and ILO in this entire uh, NEPAD CADEP implementation process have already participated. We uh, jointly contributed to actually the last AU summit in the summer um, on youth employment issues in particular. There are negotiations and discussions between uh, the MPCA and ILO on youth and employment issues. We have jointly participated in the seventh CADEP partnership platform meeting and gave a presentation on uh, rural employment, again focusing on youth and, and women. We have participated again, both agencies in the rural futures uh, strategic briefing that Dr. Mayaki has, uh, has uh, mentioned. And we are now in uh, vivid discussions and developments of a uh, new partnership explicitly on decent employment and also uh, uh, creating a technical cooperation program that could be one of the Rural Futures flagship initiatives in the future to really come up with viable implementation approaches. Now, approaches on, on uh, employment creation, there are many, and I'm not going into them into detail. And Loretta also mentioned ILO alone has like 50, 50 different approaches. So we are not short of potential approaches. We are not, not short of, if you can continue to the next slide, please. This is, for instance, the starting the business, uh, your own business, which has been implemented by ILO in 90 countries. Next slide, please. The farmer field school approach that I mentioned uh, has been laid out and reached 2 million farmers worldwide so far, especially looking at integrated pest management. And again, the JFFLS is an offspring of, of, of this. Next slide, please. Here I'm trying to show, actually, the JFFLS, which is really a learning employment creation, market access approach that really leads young people not only through the training phase but really uh, provides them with an occupation opp opportunity. We tried at the Roo Futures meeting to actually link this to the respective um, interest areas under these, these overarching areas of rethinking the rural sector and, uh, and farming uh, as, a, as a rural agenda. And you will see, and we don't have time to go through this, but it really links to the local needs, uh, agriculture and the agricultural linkages, which were mentioned a lot, ecosystems, climate change concerns, globalization, human capital development, global markets and investment issues. And there are aspects in this approach, which is a modular mm. approach that really goes through many, many different uh, learning topics and always looks at the agricultural life skills and also business skills that can actually function as an integrated approach that takes care of many, many of these subjects in a very localized and, of course, micro context of, uh, of employment creation for young people. Next slide, please. This is an example how the job creation actually can work with a very, very strong institutional uh, involvement of here, for instance, uh, federate uh, cooperatives. Um, the institutions to work with are extremely important. National governments for the national buy-in, the uptake in, uh, in national programs, this institutionalization of the approaches that we get away from projects to really programmatic approaches, uh, roll them out, have upscaling, and really create national ownership so that these approaches can be taken on in existing national youth employment creation programs is something that is very, very important. And we need not only to work with the governments on this, we need to work with local government authorities, with communities. Community buy-in is extremely important at, at local level. And we need to work with the private sector and especially with farmer organizations who actually can foster the uptake of employment uh, by, by young people. Next slide, please. This just describes a little bit uh, where we have piloted this approach and how many youth we reached so far. But again, this is really to demonstrate we have something that works, that works in different contexts. It's been developed in conflict situation. Uh, we have really very diff different um, uh, literacy levels of, of children that we're working with, and we adopt the respective curricula every single time in every single context uh, we go. Uh, next slide, please. Now, we need to work on new thinking. I mean, that's what we have been talking about basically all morning. And what we are prom promoting is 
uh, to develop a kind of a private sector development approach that goes a little bit away from convention that looks at products, at profitability, sees people at, as cost drivers, uh, sees the environment as an infinite uh, source and assumes that there are linear relationships along the val value chain. Um, there are certain power relationships amongst uh, actors in value chains. Uh, people are instructed by what to do in terms of legislation and so on and so forth. And we want to have a more balanced view between the people dimension and the environment dimension, people-centered, and really look at the circular uh, relationships across people. And this is my, going to be my last slide, just to make the key messages. Youth employment in rural areas is certainly an enormous challenge. Uh, but uh, we need to look at this in order to achieve MDG 1 and feed the world in uh, 2050. Again, I share completely the views that were um, um, uh, voiced by, by Loretta on we do have the respective approaches, we have the knowledge, we have the institutional set of the mechanisms, the programming. We really need to come together and plan this in a coherent way. Uh, and coordinate our action better, better in order to get this uh, on the ground uh, and work out the complementarities across different uh, development actors. And national ownership and strate strategic partnerships are absolutely crucial for this in order to guarantee long-term and sustainable uh, growth and employment creation opportunities. Thank you very much, and sorry for being too long.